this week began my fourth year of medical school, and in a few more weeks, I'll have to take my step two exam, which basically means I'll be really short on time while studying. For the most part, I've managed to continue training throughout medical school, so I definitely have some experience when it comes to training on a busy schedule. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how to train effectively while on a very tight schedule. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is to optimize your training routine to best fit your life schedule. Now, everyone's schedules vary a lot from person to person, so don't think of these as steps to follow and more of just things to consider. One thing you should definitely think about is just how much of your week gets eaten up getting ready to work out. If your gym is a 15-minute commute away and you lift six days per week, you are eating up three hours of your week just getting to and from the gym. This also applies to little things you do to get ready to work out and things you do after working out, like changing clothes, getting a shower, or even warming up. If you can reduce your number of training days, then you can drastically reduce the amount of time you spend getting ready to work out. If this scenario describes you, it may be in your best interest to cut your number of training days down to three days per week and just doubling the length of each workout so that you can maintain the same amount of training volume. I personally think it's better to train more frequently and train more days per week. But remember, this is not a conversation about what is optimal, it's a conversation about what is practical. For some people, such as myself, this strategy does not work out so well. On some of my rotations, I had to be at the hospital for 12 to 14 hours a day pretty regularly. So on these long days, I didn't have time to fit in a full two hour workout. So on this rotation, it made more sense for me to do seven days a week working out and do all my workouts as small bite-sized workouts, doing 45 minutes a day. My weekly training time was about the same, but I was actually able to get through all of my workouts. The main reason this worked out so well for me is because as you can see here, I have a home gym. This means that a higher training frequency does not significantly contribute to an increased amount of time commuting. I also have access to a gym at the hospital, which means I don't have to commute there either. If you can find a way to minimize or eliminate your commute by working out at work, at school, or at home, this higher frequency training may work out best for you. Next, you'll want to make sure you are choosing your exercises carefully by avoiding any exercises that take a long time to set up and take down. This even means that you might have to do some exercises that are not your favorite. For example, if your favorite back exercise is seal rows and it requires that you go all the way to the one corner of the gym to get your plyo boxes and all the way to the other corner of the gym to get your bench and then go somewhere else to get a barbell and drag some plates all together to just to set up this one back exercise, in the amount of time it takes you to set that up and take that down, you could have probably just done all of your rows on some kind of selectorized machine if you have it in your gym. Even in my home gym here, I have to avoid certain exercises when I'm in a hurry. I love, I have a T-bar row station over here that I don't get to use very often because it's annoying and takes time to set up. In the time it takes me to set it up and put all the plates on it and everything, I could have just grabbed a pair of dumbbells and knocked out all my dumbbell rows. So in my situation, even if these T-bar rows are slightly better, which is probably arguable, it's just better for me to go ahead and get more volume done with the dumbbells. Finally, you just need to work out faster. There are two main ways you can make this happen. The first of which is to time your rest periods. Now for strength training, I think it's better to rest longer in general. I think if you need to rest five to seven minutes between each of your sets to make sure you're fully recovered and can use more weight on each set, I think that'll be better for your strength gains. But again, we're talking about what is practical here. If you only have 30 minutes to squat, it's better to reduce your weight by three or 5% and actually get in a lot more volume than if you were to rest a full seven minutes between each set. For competition movements and any close variations, I recommend no more than a three minute rest period. This may require a slight weight reduction, but I promise three minutes will work just fine. For any other movements, it should be two minutes or less depending how hard the movement is. The second thing you should do to work out faster is to incorporate supersets. Any of your easier isolation movements should all be done back to back. If your routine calls for five sets of rows and five sets of chest flies, there is no reason why you can't knock all those out back to back to back. This will save you a ton of time. If you had to rest a minute between each set of flies, this gives you plenty of time to do all of your rows between each of those sets. This lets you knock out two isolation exercises in easily under 10 minutes. Again, this might require that you reduce the working weight a little bit, but it's much better to get through a full routine with slightly less weight than it is to get through only half of your exercises. All right, that's all the advice I had for training while busy. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Time for you to get back to studying. As always, have a great dang day.